Ooh, let's balance that camera. Hi, everybody. It's Jennifer McCreese. Today is December 21st, 2021. And this is take three. Usually I do all my videos in one take. Um, this is a rather difficult video to make, so the first two takes just didn't live up to the standards that I have, but we're going to try it a third time here, folks. Dasher the cat's over there. He's climbing into the, the shopping bag. Anyway, let's get on with the business at hand. It's December 21st, and Jennifer McCreeth, four days before Christmas, just a couple weeks before my birthday, received notification that I am being laid off, losing my job. Well, it was a temporary assignment, but it wasn't supposed to be this temporary. But uh, allegedly, this is what happens when you have fine print in a collective agreement called bumping. Someone else has lost their job, but rather than them becoming unemployed, they have seniority. They can say, I want to take that person's job over there because they have less seniority. So I lose my job instead. Well, I was just starting to get used to the place, you know, five months. It's tough to just start a new job. Um, there's a learning curve. And unfortunately, there are pros and cons to using temporary employees to do quasi-permanent work. And this is exactly what's happened to me for the third time here with the government of Newfoundland and Labrador. Three times I was hired I've actually been hired six times, but these three specific times, I came in as a temporary employee to do what appears or appeared to be everyday general operations, not a temporary project per se. But you know what? That's just the way it goes. Um, so I'm a free agent yet again. And the timing couldn't be worse. Um, I went from being underemployed to unemployed to underemployed to unemployed to dealing with COVID-19, trying to find a job when nobody's hiring and inflation is going through the roof and the bills that need to be paid, some of them haven't been paid in a while and the creditors are, are zooming in on you and for the, God, I don't know, 10, 11, 12th Christmas in a row, I won't be seeing any of my family. That's what happens when you move away and unfortunately that's what happens when you come out as trans but uh, that's a whole other story um, my goodness difficult uh, what are the five things that we often want and crave in life and I'm sure a lot of you people out there have all five of these and take for granted house car job wife kids I'm almost 48 years old and I've never had any of those. Yeah, it can be frustrating. Um, life isn't fair sometimes. And uh, I heard a quote on the news. I was watching, uh, what was I watching? Pardon the interruption. One of my favorite sports uh, talk shows, Michael Wilbon, uh, was talking about racism in sports and mentioned that Arthur Ashe, the famous tennis player, once said being black is a is like having a second full-time job that doesn't pay anything. I could say the same thing about being a trans person, especially in a place like St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada, where there is not a lot of education and awareness about trans people and trans issues. Every time I take on a new job, it's like starting from scratch. The education piece starts all over again. We have to just not just I can't just go in and do do the job. People are going to be curious about me. Some people might be nervous or hesitant and people are going to use the wrong pronouns and it, it's it, it's just difficult and uh, I guess here we go again. Um, I'm beginning to wonder I mean, when I lost my first job, it seemed quite evident and obvious that I wasn't just being laid off because of a technicality. It seemed quite clear to me that it was discrimination. 
that I lost a job because I came out as trans. The other one's different. I went in already out as trans, so I can't say I lost the job for being trans. However, um, when you get a job in government, whether you like it or not, and even though it's not supposed to be a factor, you just never know what's happening behind the scenes. Certain political parties come into power and they often clean house, not just in terms of political staffing, but in the public service as well. I can't help but wonder, it's no secret that I ran against the Liberals in the last election, and maybe this is their way of getting revenge, maybe? Jennifer McCreeth, you ran against us and you got this new job and we're going to turf you out four days before Christmas. I hope this not what's really happening here, but uh, I really have to wonder. Ultimately, um, again, there's pros and cons. There's arguments for and against permanent employees versus temporary employees. Heck, employees versus contractor. Sometimes we think it's better to bring a contractor in. Heck, our provincial government just doled out $50 million to a private firm to give them advice on whether or not, and if so, which assets they should sell. That's a lot of money. But the problem here is you don't have knowledge management. You bring someone into an organization, you train them, they work hard, they feel part of a team, and then within 10 days notice, they're turfed out the door. And uh, there goes all that great knowledge, all that training and development that you, that you had to put into me when I first started the job. Well, now you're going to get someone else and you're going to have to start that process all over again. And this person's being bumped in, so they're probably already angry and upset that they've lost their job. Maybe they're taking a step down in pay. I don't know. You could say, well, they better be happy to have a job. But, uh, yeah, I just don't get it. Um, my parents were raised in a, a time where it was a, an employee's market as opposed to an employer's. They could walk out of university with their degree and right away have 15 to 20 job offers waiting on the sidewalk on their way home. Not the same for my generation or current generations. Seems to be the other way around. We're begging and scratching and clawing just to get measly, low-paying temp assignments that don't even allow us to grow. There's a lot of dead-end jobs out there. You wonder why people are there's so much movement. That's another issue. Whatever happened to valuing your employees? Don't treat them like a, a number. Treat them as an asset. You attracted me here in 2007, Newfoundland. You went out of your way to pay for me to move here because I had something in my resume that was so darn impressive and so darn hard to find that you had to bring in a mainlander to do that work. Nobody else could do it. But then, two years later, I'm thrown aside. You don't get your $5,000 back for the moving van. Same thing here. I keep hearing and seeing in the news. We're having trouble attracting and retaining talent here, especially in uh, doctors. We've heard a lot of news about the doctors. We don't have enough doctors. The health minister said something mean to the, the doctor students. I don't know, whatever. No wonder. I'm just about, I've just about had it. Why should I stay here any longer? I've tried really hard to make this place my home. Fourteen and a half years. I didn't just come here to work and live. I came here as a trans pioneer. I never thought I was going to transition here. People told me not to do it. Go somewhere else, Jennifer. Go back to Toronto. Go to Vancouver. Go somewhere where there's diversity and acceptance. I'm like, you know what? No, that's not right. People should be allowed to be who they are any part of this country. We keep saying how great this country is, right? Well, I know some Newfoundlanders and Labradorians still disagree with joining Canada in 1949, but that's a whole other story.
Another thing I'm going to say is uh, I used to be very active with the transactivism work I did. And several years back, I, I kind of put that on the back burner. I had to focus more on just taking care of my own life. And others have stepped up to the plate and tried their best and advocated for things that are important to them. But uh, quite frankly, I hate to point this out, but it is tougher to be trans now, here, than it was five, ten years ago. We've regressed. So what's next? I don't know. You gonna stay here or you gonna go? Well, I'm looking for work. I'd like to have a great job. I'd like to work for an organization. I don't just want a job, I want a career. I want to invest my life into something I strongly believe in with a group or an organization that believes in me. At the same time, I gotta get the bills paid, so. Free agent, Jennifer McCreeth's on the market again. The only good news is I will no longer be employed by the Department of Justice system. Technically, it's not the department, it's the courts. I've worked, for, it's funny, I've worked for the Crown, I've worked for the police, and now I'm working for the courts. And when you work for the courts, you got to be very careful about what you say and do, because you don't want to put yourself or the organization into a perceived conflict of interest. I see a lot of things on the news that I'd love to get out there on Twitter and blast somebody about, but I just can't do it because it would get me in trouble, it would get me fired, it would get the organization into all sorts of trouble. Guess what? Once I become a free agent, the muzzle comes off. And all those stories that we've been holding, biting our tongue about, we can finally open our mouth and say what we want to say. And believe me, I will have lots to say. So stay tuned. Jennifer McCreeth 2022 YouTube channel is going to be stirring the pot. There's going to be a lot of controversy. There's going to be a lot of fun things going on here. Um, trying to keep things positive, but we will expose negativity if we have to. And we will call out things that aren't appropriate, whether it's incompetence or corruption, uh, whether it be government or private sector. Yeah, there's the update. Um, Take three. This was actually a pretty good video. Better than the first two. So I think this one's going to be posted. So I'll say good night. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Whatever you want to celebrate here. I don't know that I'll be celebrating that Christmas tree right there. I'm probably going to smash it with a chair as I did several years ago because uh, it's just not been a very good Christmas for me. And it's been many, many Christmases in a row that quite frankly have fucking sucked.